Today, I'd like to take a lighthearted yet serious journey into the antics of our feathered friends in the yard. As spring arrived, we eagerly welcome the melodious songs of grateful birds, who flock to our yard to enjoy the birdseed and fat balls we provided. However, as time passed, their behavior took a turn for the worse. Initially, the birds' sweet songs filled the air with joy. Their gratitude was evident as they relished the abundance of food we offered. They sang in harmony, creating a beautiful symphony all day long that brought smiles to our faces and joy to our hearts. We felt blessed to be able to provide for them and to witness their appreciation for that provision. However, prosperity seems to have brought out the worst in our avian friends. As the days went by, we noticed a shift in their behavior. Instead of singing harmoniously, they started squabbling and fighting over the feeder. Angry squawks and territorial disputes replaced their once angelic chirping. We couldn't help but shake our heads at the absurdity of it all. Even Tess was baffled by their behavior. This scenario holds a more profound truth for us as well. Often, when we are blessed with abundance and prosperity, it can lead us down a slippery slope towards selfishness and ungratefulness. The more we have, the more we desire and are less satisfied. It's a reminder that contentment is not found in accumulating material possessions, but in appreciating our blessings. In his letter to the Philippians, the Apostle Paul imparted valuable wisdom regarding contentment. In Philippians 4.11-12, he writes, Not that I speak in respect of want. For I have learned, in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full, and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Paul's words echo through the ages, reminding us that true contentment transcends circumstances. Whether we have little or much, our attitude toward what we possess shapes our outlook on life. Paul's secret lay not in his possessions but in his perspective, rooted in his faith in God. Returning to our feathered friends, we witnessed the irony of their pursuit of more. In their frenzy for food, they lost the joy and harmony that characterized their initial gratitude. As we chuckle and roll our eyes at their antics, let's also examine our own lives. Are we becoming so consumed with obtaining more that we lose sight of the simple joys and blessings already present? Let's remember that gratitude is a choice. Regardless of our circumstances, we can focus on our blessings and cultivate a heart of thankfulness. By doing so, we guard ourselves against the insidious nature of greed and discontentment. Not to mention, the world sounds so much nicer when we're singing instead of snarling at one another.